Miss 5250 here. Crazy for justice. Let me tell you what's going on in America today with the criminal justice system. All you back the blue people and all you people calling out there for more cops. More fucking cops. That's where half the damn COVID m money went in your city, people. To the damn cops. I've, po I've been posting video since June of 2019. And and it's and it was about my truck then because the, because they have my truck but and they started threatening my truck the um and ticketed my truck on the 8th when I got arrested okay so they have my truck I I go to court um three months people three months after the fact now, any investigation and any, um, you know, responsibility of the Fresno Police Department should have been well completed by the time I went to arraignment. Now, I, I was not allowed prior to arraignment to see the uh, charges against me. I mean, I, I was able to see the charges, PC 148A1. That's, you know, that's what I was able to see. And PC 602, whatever that was. That's what I was able to see prior to arraignment. Um, I couldn't get, you know, a copy of the incident report, even with the poor, uh, helpless victims information redacted. I couldn't get that prior to having to go before a judge. So for three months, you get to, you know, have this hanging over your head. When, you know, you get pulled over, anything, the cops can see that, oh, you've been arrested. You've been in trouble. All right? Um, so, when I finally do get the incident report, which I believe I, I was able to get it once, once I was, I stood in front of a judge. Now, the body-worn camera footage that, uh, that is from inside the booking when you get booked, it doesn't show me getting fingerprinted or my picture taken. Um, it, and I think, he, uh, I think he turned off his body cam or else they, they just, you know, redacted that part. I don't know. But inside, oh, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying not to touch this thing because of the the bad sound. I know it's horrible, but you know I, I didn't ask for this. I did not. I did not um, call the police. I did not decide not to uh, follow you know Fresno Poli PD policy. I have no idea what Goldstein's policy is, and Goldstein's you know is a DBA, a fictitious business deal which was expired at the time by like four or eight days I, I don't know but it was expired I think it expired on the fourth and this happened on the eighth so you know that doesn't matter um and they're they're a business so and they it's not just Goldstein's how many other um businesses do Beards and Beers Inc run in Fresno I'm pretty sure that new that new place that just opened. So, how are they how are they training their people? That is a valid question. Um, another valid question for my lawyer, which I told her uh, that I went down to Fresno Police Headquarters on June 10th, two days after my arrest, and I spoke with Rudy Tafoya. I requested a watch commander. I wanted to go as high as possible because I knew that I did not get get arrested legally and lawfully. I was supposed to receive a warning. My lawyer says 
They gave you a warning. You can hear them. On yeah, you can hear them. But where is the video from the officer number one and officer number two on the scene? That was not Wamhoff. But yet the criminal complaint reads like he was the first cop there, and him and Wilson were not the first cops there. You can clearly hear on the body cam footage. Those two are sitting inside a patrol unit and, and they're looking at the screen and I can't read what's on the screens, but they say Walls and they say McGuire and they say another name, Baker. And they say something like that's wrong or that's a mistake or there's obviously something that is not right on that screen that they are looking at. I um, obtained the names of Officer 1 and Officer 2, not on June 10th from Rudy Tafoya when I gave him my statement, but um, and not from Internal Affairs, that that's what Rudy Tafoya did, 17-year veteran police officer, um, that's what he did. He, instead of um, putting down my statement, which like I asked him because I didn't have a phone because Wamhoff kept it I was freaking out because it was a, it was um, tied to my new security system you know I get alerts on my phone um, my banking everything everything you do how you freak out when your cell phone is stolen and you know pretty much who's got it well it was the Fresno PD who got it so how the hell paranoid are you going to be then? So instead of easing my mind, uh, I did get from Tafoya that day, besides um, getting the pictures taken of all the bruises up and down my arms, which I have still not seen yet, that should be entered into evidence, Joy. I have never seen those pictures that were taken that day that I gave my statement to Rudy Tafoya inside City Hall. Fresno City Hall. Federation fucking headquarters. So, I have every fucking right to be pissed. And why isn't my statement in the file? And why is is there no statement from Stacy Dwyer, the reporting party, in the file? Her signature was required on that NTA in order to arrest me. Those cops were not able, been able to put their fucking hands on me and manhandle me if she had not signed her name on that fucking thing. Now, somebody, if, if, if corporations are going to be making citizens arrests, they better know PC 837. Who is teaching it to them? Is that not sound legal strategy? The fact that the uh, 148 was not followed properly. There has to be documented proof that I was verbally warned prior to me getting arrested. When I come back, then I get arrested. If and when I come back. The CCTV video, let's fucking talk about that. Which I asked from day one for both of my attorneys to request that. Where is the CCTV video that they are required to preserve per evidence, as evidence. And when corporations are making citizens arrest, when corporations that can't go to jail, that can't be put inside a cell, now their CEOs can, their three, their three officers can be arrested, and can be handcuffed and can be jailed but the purpose of the corporation is 
to um, shield them, to shield them from liability, to shield Scott Miller and Jeff Wolpert and Craig Johnson from liability. So they should at least be, be required to send the CCTV video in to be used as evidence because somebody's willing to fucking prosecute when that when they sign that thing as arresting officer when you are the damn arresting officer you have responsibilities when you take somebody else's freedom away and nobody cares how it's affecting my mental health to um to go through this shit i used to sell real estate loans Okay, part of our training was, hey, this is one of the most stressful things in life. Death, divorce, um, an IRS audit, and being arrested, and, and being falsely arrested, that's got to be up there higher. And yet all of these people that swear oaths to uphold the truth and abide by the Constitution. Oh my God, what a fucking joke. I've never been arrested. I'm first offender, 57-year-old, two-time cancer patient. The state has decided that I am disabled. And I believe that it is because of chemotherapy. Because of what chemotherapy does to your fucking brain. Because um, to be mentally, to be, to be put on a 5150, there's three criteria. Um... You have, to, you have to be a danger to yourself. That's number one. Number two, danger to others. And number three, uh, you can't take care of yourself. You're gravely disabled to where you cannot handle your finances. You cannot feed or clothe yourself. Or, or keep a roof over your head. Well, I fucking managed to do that. While Bank of America is trying to take my house away twice. And it's... The first time it was right after I lost my mom in 2014, and the second time it was while during during my fucking chemotherapy. All right, you can ask Dr. Lemon. I I'm carrying um, I've got I've got uh, you know documents, home loan, all the, my home loan stuff. I'm 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 bringing with me so I can have my telephone convers uh, telephone appointment with Bank of America. Actually, while, while chemotherapy drugs are flowing into my fucking arm. Or my chest, excuse me. So, you know, when my fucking attorney doesn't want, doesn't want to believe that this is about corruption. And this is about police abusing their powers. And trying to hide the theft of my, my cell phone. The prior restraint that was committed... No, the prosecution, they're willing... I've gotten four plea deals in this mess. Oh, they're, they're willing to drop one or the other. First round with, with Dan Mosley. Oh, they're willing to drop this, the trespass. And then, you know, a little later, oh, they're willing to drop the obstructing, but they're not willing to drop everything. I have to be guilty of something. That's, you know, because it happened again. Now I have a public defender... And I'm telling my public defender that, you know, the last lawyer screwed me. And, you know, all of these things that I'm asking for, that I'm allowed to ask for, where are they? And, and why isn't the public defender's office, you know, how much, how much money do they make? Well, let's use, let's use 150 bucks because that's what uh, Fresno Police Department for, for the code enforcement bullshit that I have just, um, that is my, my protest. The only thing that I can do, the only thing that I have fucking control over is my own property. But, but I guess I don't, I don't have control over that either. Um, because if there's an eyesore, if, if, you know, someone doesn't, someone thinks something on, on my front lawn is junk, then, then they can complain to the city. And the city knew that I was going to, uh, the city knew I was going to challenge their little code enforcement bullshit. And, um, 
Rudy Tafoya can attest to that. Because we stood together inside the Code Enforcement Office on that day. The day that I gave my fucking statement inside of City Hall. And the day they took the pictures of those bruises that I still have not seen. Show me proof, Rudy Tafoya, where you sent me the pictures of my bruises like I asked. I didn't need you to take pictures of them. I could have taken pictures of them myself. But I wanted you to do your fucking job. But you didn't. Instead, you um, you opened an internal, internal affairs investigation. Which, if, if there's any body cam that exists for the day that I walked into City Hall and met with you... Oh, you finally found me. Huh. You finally found me. That, that police report was in my purple binder, too, that my lawyer's not interested in. How, um, I just wasn't making any sense. I'm some kind of, you know, rambling idiot. And, and I didn't make myself very fucking plain and clear on what I expected to happen. What I expected Rudy Tafoya to do was to investigate... Where the hell is my cell phone? And to put my statement that I asked for my formal trespass, that's what I was waiting for. That's what I wanted. I was told I was detained by Officer 1 or Officer 2, whichever one they were. I bet, I bet if I hadn't been there, if I had been GOA, which is gone on arrival... Which I had plenty of time to do. I did not believe that Stacy Dwyer called the called anybody. I thought she was bluffing. Because I hadn't done a damn thing. And I hadn't been there long enough to bother anybody. And I didn't start getting loud. Until after I knew she actually called the fucking cops. It was ridiculous. That's what was fucking ridiculous. Oh my God! This, and and I want the bill. I've already requested this. I want to know how much this has cost the taxpayer, all the way around. City of Fresno, Fresno County um, District Attorney's Office, wh who Miss Lisa Smithcamp is well fucking aware that I I have contacted her Public Integrity Unit multiple times, multiple times. I contacted the local FBI and got hung up on. Just like who? Just like San Joaquin Valley Transparency has gotten hung up on. And I went a step farther and called the, um, the Las Vegas FBI. Because this involves my sister as well. She made fools of, of the California criminal justice system. She, you know, little, little, uh, well, evaded them, evaded them twice. I think it was lying to get her, uh, the, the first time she said that her dad died, I guess, or I, I don't know, but they let her go to Nevada Twice, so, whatever I don't know. They pulled her back, did the, uh, you know, extradited her, extradited her twice from Nevada. And and I was and I was having a fit too, and calling everybody about why they are pulling her back. Drug court. She was in drug court in Nevada, and she was doing well. And Nevada did not want to send her. Did not want to send her back. Because she was doing well there. And this is what, you know, she got in trouble here. After she had been clean and sober for a while. So, this is about way more. And, and then I also embarrassed Jerry Dyer and the, and the fucking Fresno Police Department. Um, the, the, I had a fraud case. It was televised on... 47 on your side. 
so they know I wasn't going to shut my mouth. But they, they think they're going to railroad me in that courtroom, and it ain't going to fucking happen. It ain't happening, people. If they, like I said, if they're going to try to do this shit to me, and it's not just because I have a big mouth, and I document things, and I let people, other people know what they're doing to people. I'm not special. They're, it, it's not just me. But if someone with 57 years old that, I mean, very recently, um, I'm in a transition of life. Now I'm 60. I haven't been able to leave Fresno because of this. And part, you know, obviously partly because of COVID too. By the time I got my truck back and hired a lawyer, I had to refinance my house in order to, to get some money together. And it was, luckily it was good timing and I was thinking about doing it anyway, but I was forced, <coughs> excuse me, I, I was forced into, into it, you know, I had no fucking choice, because they weren't taking my truck, that, that would have been very, very bad for my mental health, and I knew that, if I did not fight, and I just, I couldn't sign my damn truck over. And I wasn't going to give up the right to appeal any bullshit decision either. So they all knew that I couldn't sue Monty. I couldn't sue fucking Ray's Towing. Even DeRosa, De Del Rosa, he was a brand new judge. He handled the appeal. Um, he didn't care that she's still holding my fucking truck. That I had all the judgment money. Oh, but but it was on a it was on a debit card. I didn't have a fucking credit card, and I didn't have cash. So, so she's got my truck. It's you know it's the middle of freaking summertime. I'm supposed to go to the, go and take the bus, because I couldn't afford Uber at that time. I have to go and take the bus to the bank, and get all this money and take the bus home. And have all this money in my house and and then go to court and that court date is a public thing you know it's it's published there so I can't bring I mean you know there are people unscrupulous fucking people that know these things that pray you know that look at court documents and so because I didn't do that, because the day, and, and I, I think it, it might even have been a Monday, the court, so I would have had to have that money all weekend. Um, and, you know, I'm getting eye rolls and shit. When I was in the freaking right, the tow order, which is the Holy Grail, was filled out incorrectly. Like, if they... They're supposed to lose in court if they miss one thing on that tow order. And they missed many things. They, I never got my proper notice. Um, and I paid 3500 bucks to get that fucking truck back. Well, now that truck, per the evidence that the state has against me, is now officially evidence in this case. And, and it's pr it just proves... The freaking harassment, the retali that this is retaliation, because race towing is 100% of their income comes from the Fresno tow rotation. So I requested from both the California DMV and the um, Fresno City Attorney's Office that uh, race towing be audited, because my tow tow order is not correct. And, and Sacramento never fucking sees the tow order. Sacramento DMV lets you, uh, lets them sell your vehicle out from under you, no matter hard, how hard that you are fighting to keep your, your vehicle, they can't help you. All the laws are, are for the tow, tow companies. And they're using, two judges believed Two, two judges believed that the city contractor does not have an email 
but then didn't put two and two together. So how am I, how am I supposed to contact? This is a very volatile situation. It's very personal for me. That's my stuff. My Fourth Amendment right is being violated. To Monty Evans and that tow fucking company, it's inventory. It's a piece of fucking inventory. She admitted in that courtroom that, um, oh, she couldn't take the $350 fucking cash money that I had tried to give her the day that, uh, some of my earliest videos, the you know, show, show I called the cops. I was trying to get everything documented that she would not, she would not uh, take the $350, not take any responsibility that um, I couldn't find my fucking truck for six days, so I have to pay for that. It's my, it's my fault that, uh, that there's all those storage fees. That's bullshit. And I believe that the reason that I am Miss 5250 and not Miss 5150 is because if they would have let me out in three days, I could have got my damn truck. But they let me out Friday. They, they held me for an extra day. Why? Because I, I wouldn't take their Seroquel. Um, I was asking every day about my truck. Call, you know, they knew it. They knew I was freaked out that my truck had been towed away. And so did the, uh, so did the people at C CRMC. My, my medical records say that I, that's, I, that's when I started crying. Not when they put me in there. When I knew my truck was towed. And they, they, so three days later, well, this is also, um, getting very long it's getting long so i'm gonna stop all right it's um 28 minutes and i just want to complete the thought about the uh court that um both judges are believing that she doesn't have any any um email which is a bullshit lie which I knew it which you know now I can prove it so so I was being denied um, a way to communicate with her and negotiate and um, because they knew they knew that I was making a reasonable offer but she in court admitted that the reason that she didn't take my money was because then she would lose all ability to be able to sue me. Well, I have other collateral. I own a damn house. You know, they should have been able to verify that. But most of all, uh, in in a court of law, a judge believed that that a person that has a tow company and an M MCP multi carrier permit has does not have the ability to send out the proper uh, notification to the registered owner within 48 hours because you know that is another thing that if something had come in the mail within 48 hours there was a man at my house uh the man i gave my car keys to the day they took me away to the mental institution and that was, um, so, uh, that's another, that's a whole nother one. Um, but that was the call into the, the call came from the Fresno Police Department to have my truck towed. And the tow company only, only, their sole income is Fresno Police Department. They do not do private tows. That is a statement in court record, on the record. Um, that they don't do private toes. So, my phone records will prove that I have called the tow unit and my email records will prove that I have spoken and, I mean, and explained the situation and 
the law is that signage, they need proper signage at all entrances, 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 not, not posted up on the wall in the middle between two entrances. The, the picture, oh, my, my court pictures, I was not allowed to submit my pictures that were of the entrances of both, they had proper, this is neighborhood thrift, everybody knows, um, you can see the proper signage in my videos of, of Miguel Arias and the parade. You can see that that one little parking lot in front has proper signage. The parking lot in back did not. And so they wouldn't, she wouldn't take my pictures the first time around in court. My evidence was not allowed to be submitted. Um, oh, the, in the appeal, it was, it was accepted, but it did not change the ruling. In fact, Judge uh, Samuel De La Rosa penalized me a thousand dollars because I told him that I had every every penny on a debit card. Well, Fresno Superior Court doesn't have doesn't take debit cards, and um, but Monty Evans does. Monty Evans does take debit cards, so. It should have been that I, I had to pay her. She had to release to me my vehicle. And I give her the original judgment amount. But that's not what happened. The judge didn't care that I had it on a debit card. I actually got a fucking eye roll. I got an eye roll. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and he did something really fucking shady the on the on the court rules there's a 30 day rule well he shortened it to 15 days and i think that happened with uh the first time around too that something happened funny there i posted that online cuz it was all worked out and then george cooper put in a put in a call i think i mean or monty evans i think put in a call to george cooper that, that, um, I'm sure I put that one up too, of my conversations with Monty Evans. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to put, put out there that, you know, the, uh, the judges are taking her evidence where my truck was parked is in the middle in between two entrances and you can clearly see the sign, but you can't really tell that it's, it's 20 feet off the ground. I mean, I stood next to that sign, I'm 5'3", with my arm extended, you know, up as far as I could reach, and, you know, the sign is still quite a bit, quite a ways up there, and the reason that they have the signage, you know, with the lettering requirements and everything, is so that you can see it and read it, and what, what they don't put on that signage, everyone, is that it's one hour towing, and they can legally tow your car after one hour. Even if it's been, you know, you can't park there and walk across the street or, you know, whatever. So that all that parking down there in the tower, when you park at one place and walk to another, they can legally tow your vehicle. And if, because if they put, um, you know, two hours, three hours, something on their sign in their parking lot to, like, give you some extra time, they have to honor that. And I worked for Manco Abbott for two, two years, maybe a little more. And um, we towed two vehicles off commercial property that I can remember in, in those two years. And um, so anyway, I will, I will tell more of my story later. That's the only way it's going to get, uh, that's the only way it's going to get out there. Sorry, I have to, I have to unlock my, unlock my device, because I'm super paranoid. <laughs> Everything's got a password. Okay, so 35 minutes, I'm sorry, but, you know. I'm doing this not only for me, people, I am doing it for everyone. This is happening every single day. Every day. 
Local government is important. You have to pay attention. We have to stick up for each other. And that's what I am trying to do here. I'm trying to let you know the little tricks and the bullshit that they play. And we can't let them. We cannot let them.